Good afternoon, Nova Nations. We take an aerial look at beautiful Villanova Stadium. My name is Steve Pannone, and thank you for joining us today for the 2020 Villanova Football Signing Day show. I'm joined by head coach Mark Ferrante. Coach, you guys come off a 9-4 and four season from last year, 5-3 and three in the CAA, a playoff berth. Let's go back and recap that season a little bit. Give us your thoughts on last season. Yeah, last season went really well. We started off uh, really hot, and then we, you know, hit the uh, stretch of our schedule where we're getting into all our league play and those types of things. And uh, to make it back to the playoffs was huge. So real excited about what our team and our staff was able to put together last fall for sure. And Coach, in every year in college football, there's always turnover. You guys had a really young group, but you did lose some key players to graduation. Let's talk a little bit about some of the guys that won't be coming back. Well, we lost some guys, but with the uh, COVID situation that we were faced with this year and not playing this fall, uh, most of our roster, fortunately, will be back. Um, the only guys that we had depart from the program were, were three grad trans grad school guys, not grad transfers. They started with us in their career. Changa Hodge, uh, Paul Gratton, and Todd Summers are the only three guys from last year's roster at this point in time that um, you know has depart have departed. Uh, and it's pretty much due to the fact that we didn't have a season this year is why they chose to you know explore other options. And you, you mentioned COVID, obviously the challenges that that is brought on on your program going to detail a little bit about what you guys have been through since last March as you guys get ready to hopefully play this spring. Yeah, as everyone knows, uh, FCS pretty much didn't play. There was a few teams that played this fall. Uh, we weren't able to play. We got out there and we came back in August and uh, we're able to get through the majority of our semester. So we're able to get in the weight room. We're able to get on the field. We're able to do some things with our strength and conditioning coach. And then, um, you know, Mike Tucker did a great job getting our guys back into shape. And then we got out there it started out slow, just offense was on the field one day, defense was on the field the next day, but we were gradually able to have some full team practices, uh, which went really well. And um, now our semester ended, December 5th was the last day of finals. Our guys are all home now, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to, you know, maintain the maintain the conditioning and, and strength gains that they did, uh, were able to have when they were here with us. And uh, we're not coming back till mid-January, so we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can, you know, maybe get into a spring season. One of those leaders that is returning for your ball club this year is linebacker Forrest Ryan. He had a minute to catch up with Nova Nation All Access is Nick Montagna. Let's listen to Forrest. Forrest Ryan, the senior linebacker, joining us here as we talk signing day coverage. Forrest, take us back into the whole recruiting process with Villanova and what you remember about playing in high school and deciding which school you might want to attend and ultimately what drew you to Villanova. The one thing that always stood out to me was how genuine the coaching staff was during the recruiting process. Just whatever they told you, it was true. Like some of these coaches on other schools will, you know, feed you a, a load of lies and try to, you know, persuade you to come to their school and tell you things that aren't true or just do a lot of things that Villanova doesn't do. An offer from Villanova is a genuine offer. It's a true offer. And you can tell by the way the coaches interact with you and your family going through the process. Um, for me, why I ended up uh, choosing Villanova was simply just the fact that you get a, you're you going to get a great mix of, of people that are trying to, you know, guide you on a path to be great. And that's not just on the field. That's, you know, whether it be your spiritual journey or your academic journey or your, and you're going to play in the best FCS con conference in the country. You know, you can't, you can't beat those things. And, um, you know, it was really just me and my mom making the decision. And, you know, she wanted me to trust what I thought. I loved Coach Ferrante. I loved Coach Crocker. I came up, met some of the guys. Drew Wiley, who was a linebacker last year, hosted me. Um, so the, I just fell in love with the campus, fell in love with the location. Everything was was pretty spot on for me, and it was an easy decision. And it was a, it was a decision I'll never regret. Uh, finally, Forrest, uh, what advice would you have for our incoming freshmen? What would you like to have told Forrest Ryan when he was coming back in as a, as a college freshman at Nova? <laughs> um, I think I think I would probably say is, is trust yourself. You know, um, you you got yourself here. You got yourself to a prestigious university, a great academic, great football. So you had to have been doing something right. You know, don't come here and you know be persuaded by other people well we want to be persuaded in a good way by other people because it's a new environment there's going to be people persuading you in a good way but don't be persuaded to do things that aren't naturally who you are you know if you you got yourself here 
and continue to do that. Be great. You know, that's what I would say. Excellent answer. Forrest Ryan, preseason All-American linebacker joining us. I'm Nick Montagna here for our signing day coverage. Forrest, thanks for joining us. We appreciate Forrest Ryan taking the time to sit down with Nick. And we're joined by offensive coordinator Chris Bowden. Coach, as you enter your second year as the offensive coordinator, let's go back to last season and your first season. Give us your thoughts on your year one as the OC here at Villanova. I think uh, I think offensively we did, you know, a pretty good job. I think, uh, you know, from all our goals coming in um, of – you know, protecting the quarterback and, and having balance and getting the ball in our playmaker's hands. I think we did a really good job. We had a lot of young players play for us. So um, we're really excited about uh, what next year will bring. And you have an opportunity. You're going to bring in seven players on offense, three out, three wide outs, three offensive linemen, and you're going to bring a tight end in as well. Let, let's start up front where it all starts for any offensive line. You have Eric Bakish coming in. Eric's an offensive lineman from the Salisbury School in Connecticut, 6'4", 290 pound. Team captain in 2020, first team all NEPSAC offensive lineman. Let's take a look at Eric. Yeah, I mean, Eric is, uh, we're, we're very excited about the overall recruiting class, um, but with Eric, he's a tough, physical, hard-nosed kid. You know, he's from the Salisbury School uh, via Germany. So, um, you know, he played tackle. We, we project him more as, a, as an offensive guard, offensive center. Uh, he's tough. You know, very, very physical kid, um, but he does have a lot of quick twitch uh, for an offensive lineman, which is good. Uh, he's also from the same school as our starting right tackle, Nicky Torres. So, you know, we've gotten, you know, two really good players off of that. And, you know, we're very, very happy to get him. Uh, and we think that he's going to provide uh, depth at the O-line right from the start. And we think he has a chance to be a really, really good player for us. Yeah. Continuing on the up front line on the offensive line, Ian Erickson. Six foot six, 320 pounds out of the Marist School in Georgia. You know, 32 and five a career as a starter. National Merit Scholar, so a bright kid, obviously. Probably someone that projects to play outside for you at that size. Yeah, we're looking at him to, it probably projects as more of a right tackle. Uh, comes from an exceptionally good high school football program. Uh, they're still playing in the state playoffs. You know, he is big. You know, big body, strong body, physical. You know, he comes from an uh, a, you know an option offense. So, yeah, he's he's advanced as a run blocker. Um, you know, from the pass protection side of it, he's he's gonna continue to get better at it. Uh, again, another you know hard nosed physical kid, um, but really the world of potential for him. You know, he's he's a kid that we really feel is gonna project uh, into a starter at some point. And then you head back up to New England for your third offense, uh, Stefan Voltaire from Tabor Academy, 6'5", 280 pounds. Let's take a look at Stefan. Yeah, Stefan, you know, he's he's like a piece of clay, his, according to our offensive line coach. You know, he was a lacrosse player. Uh, he only, his first year playing high school football was uh, last year, his junior year. And then this year he didn't get to play. So he's only played one year of high school football, uh, extremely athletic. Uh, you know, it just, you know, he has the size, has the ability, he's extremely mobile. Um, but again, he's, he's a kid that we really think has a huge, you know, huge upside um, just based on, you know, only one year of football and he's still trying to figure out the position. But uh, after one year, um, you know, we loved him uh, as a scholarship kid. So I think the ceiling is very high for him. And then an area of the country you're obviously very familiar when you guys go down to South Florida, St. Thomas Aquinas High School, you get a tight end in Antonio Johnson, 6'4", 255 pounds. Yeah, we're, we're very, very excited about him. I recruited him and then Coach Fletcher, our tight ends coach, did as well. Um, you know, he comes from, you know, one of the best programs, if not the best high school program uh, in the nation. Uh, you know, he's starting at tight end. He played basketball for the uh, for the school as well. He is big. He is physical. He's a great route runner. He can catch the ball. Um, he's when he blocks, he's a physical blocker, but he's also an athletic blocker, um, you know, and he's, you know, 6'4", 255. And, and we're we're ecstatic that we got him. Then, Coach, as we look forward to the wideout position, you guys bring in three wideouts this year, the first of which comes from the Cheshire Academy in Connecticut, 6'2", 190 pounds, Daniel Lopes. Talk a little bit about Daniel as we look at some footage of him. Yeah, we really like Daniel. Uh, you know, he's an explosive receiver with really great hands. Um, you know, the, the two things that really stood out is that he can catch the ball, uh, you know, the jump up balls and, and the contested balls. He's got great hands. Uh, the other thing, too, is that when he caught the ball, he's extremely explosive with his athletic movements. Um, you know, there's clips of him catching a slant and then spinning out of the uh, tackle twice and still getting up the field. So, um, you know, he's a guy I think that's going to help us more on the outside. But, uh, you know, really with our receivers, they play all over the place. So, um, you know, he's just a, you know, another 6'1", 6 6'2", 6 uh, long athletic kid. And we think he has the tools to be a special player. 
and, and staying at the wide right wide receiver position. Ethan Carr uh, from Western PA, six foot two, two hundred and five pounds. Looks like a really good athlete. He was first team All Conference as a deep back and as a quarterback. So this kid looks very athletic. Yeah, very athletic. I mean, he is a football player. You can put him anywhere on the football field, and he's going to have success. Uh, his junior year, year, he played a lot more receiver. This year, they played him at quarterback, obviously playing on defense as well. Uh, I think for the Villanova fans out there, I think he reminded us a lot of, of Jaron Hayek, of his film in high school, of just doing everything, you know, being, you know, the best player on the field. So they're going to put him in every position to win. You know, the one thing that really stood out is how really, uh, you know, explosive he was uh, as a kick returner. And that when he get when he gets going, uh, many guys don't catch him. And you know he being a long rangey kid again, another receiver with some height and some length. Uh, you know we're really, really excited to use him. We use our receivers in a lot of different ways. So I think he's going to fit in uh, really well with us. And then the third and final receiver you're bringing in is from the state of Texas. Irene Gabon Ziza uh, comes from from Nolan Catholic outside of the Dallas area. Five foot ten, 180 pounds, but had a really outstanding year. 1,400 receiving yards, 15 touchdowns. A first team All State player, first team All District. Sounds like a really good ball player. Yeah, you know, Coach Devine was in Texas and he brought him back, and, and we we loved his film. Um, you know, I mean, they had him playing everywhere, receiver, running back. Uh, again, just trying to get the ball in his hands. Um, you know, he's still playing for the state championship right now in Texas. Um, so, you know, he's you know, he's on a great team, comes from a winning program. And I think a lot of that, when you look at a lot of the kids that we recruited, they come from winning programs, which is really what you want because, you know, those kids have been brought up of, of knowing how to win. But you know, with RNA, we're, we're very, again, very excited that, you know, he's going to fit in to what we do offensively. And i uh, just really excited to get him here. And coach, you know, th these seven young men obviously will will find their way to the main line and fit into your offensive system. But overall, you happy with the class? We're ecstatic with the class. I mean, we were, we were talking about it again yesterday as a staff at that, you know, going through all these kids and, um, you know, a lot of kids, we didn't over offer kids. That's not what we do here. We, you know, we, we really pinpoint the kids we want and go after them hard. And we ended up closing out uh, most of the offense kids that we offered. So, um, you know, from the receivers, the O-line, the tight ends, I think we're, we're setting ourselves up uh, really well for the future. And wanted to talk about the offensive side of the ball. One of your returning offensive players, Justin Covington, had an opportunity to sit down with Nick Montagna right here on this. And hi, everyone. Welcome into our Villanova Football Signing Day coverage. I'm Nick Montagna. Great to have you alongside. And today we're joined by senior running back Justin Covington, who joins us via Zoom. Hey, Justin, thanks for being with us. No problem. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Great. Great. Great to see your face there. Uh, Justin, you were having a great season. The team having a great season, made the playoffs and, and suddenly had an unfortunate injury. The young running back stepped up. Uh, the first thing I'd like to know is what's the recovery been like? How are you feeling and how excited are you for the upcoming season? Um, um, the recovery's been good. Um, definitely had a, a curveball um, once the pandemic hit back in March because he came home for a little bit. But um, the training staff was able to get me a PT up here um, and I'm able to train at a facility um, close by um, and then being able to go back to school this fall. Um, we were working out again with the team and I was in, in the training room every day. Um, the knee feels good. I mean, my body feels good. And I mean, I'm just really excited to, you know, get back on the field um, at some point and just play ball. Running back Justin Covington speaking with us as we'll talk a little bit of National Signing Day. It changed a few years ago when it was not only February, they've added the early signing period for those who don't know in December as we gear up for that. Uh, Justin, what do you remember about the whole recruiting process and playing your high school football and seeing offers come in and how you decided to ultimately choose Villanova? I remember the process being fun. I also do remember it being a little stressful because you are ultimately making a decision, you know, at a young age that will affect, you know, your life, you know, 40 years down the road. Um, but I think, you know, how I came to my decision was I think ultimately I wanted a place that felt like home. And I can't really explain it, but I kind of had a feeling when I came to Villanova that this was the right place for me. And I just think that between the mixture of academics and football, that it was the best fit for me, you know, being able to be in a nursing program here and play football. I wasn't offered an option at some of the other schools I was being recruited by. And I think that was the big deal and the big difference for me. And then also, you know, Coach Talley, he, he was a great guy. The, the guys on the team were, were great. And I ultimately felt like I could grow to be the best man I could be, you know, within four years. 
Couldn't have said it any better. That's what we have here. Great student athletes and great people, most importantly. Justin Covington, the senior running back. Justin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm Nick Montagna for our Villanova football sunny day coverage. Thanks for joining us, everyone. As we take a look at the Howie Long tribute inside the Villanova football offices inside the Andy Talley Center, we want to thank Justin Covington for sitting down with Nick Montagna. I'm joined by second-year defensive coordinator, Coach Ola Adams. And, Coach, let's go back to year one. What, what you like about your unit? What do you want to see improve in year two? Talk a little bit about your first year as defensive coordinator. Um, the, the first year is always an interesting year. Um, we, we have a great group of guys. So, you know, number one, it's always good to get out there and work you know, with a group of hungry guys that that love football. Um, the biggest thing I, I think of this year, we started out off pretty hot. Um, we were one of the top defenses in the country to start the year. Um, but, you know, as usual, these last few years, we've we've always had injuries kind of come up. So I know in the secondary, you know, towards the middle and late, uh, and even through the playoffs in the season, it became tough. Just trying to put a great product out there on the field every week. Um, but credit to our guys, you know, no matter who was healthy, no matter who was in, they, they always showed up and really, really played to win. So I think that contributed a lot to our success. Um, we played a lot of young guys last year, so really looking forward um, to that experience playing off this next coming year. And uh, we got a great cr uh, class of guys, you know, freshmen that haven't played this fall that we're excited about. So, you know, we're just I think we're in a really strong position to make a good run this coming year. We really feel good about what we got. And now you speak about bringing in some new guys. You're going to bring in four guys on defense, two in your defensive backfield, uh, a linebacker and one on the D-line. So you're going to get help at all three levels. Uh, talk about the overall class and, and your excitement for these young men. You, you know, this year has been different than any other year. Uh, we've had to speed up recruiting. We've had to slow down recruiting. Um, we haven't been able to go out on the road recruiting and we've had to do everything virtually. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's been really neat um, to figure out how to navigate this process this year. Um, we really did the best job that we could really getting to know these guys, um, spending time with them and their family over Zoom, you know, every week, uh, spending time with them on the phone, social media, any anything that we could do uh, to get a glimpse into their personalities and what kind of people and character that they had. You know, we did that. So a uh, big credit to our players um, did a good job in the recruiting process of making sure that these were our kind of guys. So I know it's not a big class, um, but these four guys that we do have, we feel pretty good about. That's great. We're going to start in the defensive backfield. We'll go with, with Chance Harley. He's a defensive back from the Landon School in Maryland. 6'1", 175. Was a you know, first-team all-conference D-back this year. Team captain. Also plays some lacrosse. So let's take a quick look at some of Chance's highlights. All right. Here we go with Chance Harley. Uh, biggest thing with Chance Harley, I've known his dad since 2010. Uh, his dad's a football coach down there at Landon. Has been producing players for a long time. Uh, he also has an older brother that plays at Elon. Uh, one thing we're excited about about Chance is his position versatility. Uh, he could play corner, he could play safety, uh, he could play wide receiver, he could play running back, he could play <laughs> kick returner. He's physical blocker, he's a physical runner, um, as you can see on this tape. So as you look in years past, you know, we want guys, you know, with great size and length that could play multiple positions. So we feel really good about what Chance can bring uh, to our program. I always get excited when guys play different sports as well. So his lacrosse background is pretty strong. He's a top lacrosse player in Maryland as well. So uh, we feel like we're getting a really talented, well-rounded player, a uh, really great student in the classroom. Landon's a great school. Uh, he, he was the first uh, prospect that I knew that we had to have. And staying in the defensive backfield, we're going to go to talk about a little bit about Christian Sapp from East Stroudsburg South, six foot, 190 pounds. You know, first team all conference player, school record for catches on offense. So you know this kid's a versatile kid as well. Same high school as Changa Hodge. Yes, sir. Uh, funny, funny uh, story about about uh, Christian Sapp. So first time we turned on his tape, uh, Coach Pagan 
was trying to fight for him to be a wide receiver, and me and Coach Pennypacker shut that down right away. Uh, we, as soon as we saw Christian Sapp, number one, um, if we could stay local and get really talented players, we always want to do that. Uh, Christian Sapp was a guy who showed up here in February, so we actually got to meet him. Uh, but his, he, he's also another player that's very versatile, can play multiple positions. He's an elite wide receiver. He could play wide receiver here. That excites me uh, because he's a natural safety. Uh, he's very physical in the back end. He got great ball skills, a lot of range, uh, very long, lengthy, physical, can play zone, can play man to man, very strong as well. So, you know, we're, we're really excited about Christian Sapp. One, one thing that excites me about him is just the person that he is. Um, he's a high character, low maintenance player. Uh, I, I believe that you win with low maintenance players that, that work really hard and are talented. And then, Coach, we're going we're gonna to head up to the defensive line now. You guys go all the way down to Texas. You pick up Bryce Gaines from Second Baptist High School, six foot two, two hundred and seventy pounds. You know, first team All State, first team All District, a really uh, highlighted kid here. First team uh, Defensive Player of the Year, second team All State. He's a he's a quality player. They say uh, everything's bigger down in Texas, uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Uh, the first time I saw Bryce's tape, you know, I just smiled. You know, I like to get excited about prospects that we're recruiting and and that, and that we're taking a look at. Uh, Bryce is awesome. Very physical player. Uh, great defensive lineman. And, and what I like about him as well is he plays offensive line and, and you get to see how physical and nasty um, he is. He just plays hard. Um, but, you know, what he can do on a defensive line, he can play nose guard. Uh, he can play out, out as a four technique over the tackle. Um, he's a very versatile player, high energy. Um, the, the biggest thing uh, about Bryce is when you meet him, his personality is second to none. He's a kid that we cannot wait to meet. And Coach, you talk about you know really liking to get good local players, and you do that at the linebacker position. You pick up Shane Hartzell from Penn Ridge, Pennsylvania, six foot, two hundred and twenty-five pounds, uh, first team All Conference linebacker, All Area player, second team All Conference running back as well. So there's that versatility you like to see. Yes, sir. That, that's a great point. Uh, Shane Hartzell was one of the first linebackers that we started looking at this recruiting season. Uh, his junior season got cut short due to injury. So he only had about four games of film, but, but man, that film was lightning and we loved it. Uh, we knew that we wanted him and we knew and felt that he would get overlooked because he didn't have a full highlight of film. So we went on him early. It worked out for us. We got him. Uh, this kid is a solid linebacker, uh, a guy that we expect to be able to come in here and, and potentially contribute just because of his style of play. You know, he's ready-made, plays downhill. He's got great size to him, great strength. And the most exciting thing that you could see is he could, he could carry the ball as well. Uh, so I always ask myself, you know, what's the athleticism of linebackers? A lot of guys that you watch, they can't carry the ball and do some of the athletic things that Shane can do. So as a junior, it was more straight linebacker and defensive film. It was, it was a sight to see and, and got me even more excited watching his senior film and what he could bring to the table on the offensive side of the ball. So we're always looking to get faster, more athletic, but when you can also say stout um, and be solid in the middle while doing that, I think that's how you can build a strong defense. Well, Coach, we really appreciate you taking the time to share your thoughts on these four young men that are going to come in and represent Villanova, I'm sure, in a fine fashion. We really appreciate your time. We're going to take a quick break right here. We'll be back with Coach Fronte's closing thoughts right after this. Take a quick look at the Howie Long Sports Performance Center in the Andy Talley Center here on Villanova University's campus. Coach, we've got a chance to hear from 
Coach Bowden and Coach Adams on their respective players on their sides of the ball. Why don't you give us an overview of the class? Seven kids on offense, four coming in on defense. Yeah, we're excited about the guys we have coming in. You know, there's some guys obviously locally, like we always try to recruit Eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, uh, you know, Maryland, Delaware, the DMV down there. And then we have a couple guys coming in from distance, as you've already heard, you know, Atlanta and Texas and so on. So the national reputation that Villanova has allows us to do that and, and hit some of these outreaching areas. But we always want to start local and build uh, our team from within first, you know, from the local areas, the, the local states that we have here. So real excited about this class. Some of them had the opportunity to, you know, have their full seasons and, and play for state championships. Some of these guys are going to be players of the year in their conferences and their leagues. I'm sure some all state players are going to come out of this group as well. And a lot of them are captains. But you know what? When you when you recruit a class, a lot of guys come from that uh, type of pedigree. So they'll get here. We're excited about this class. And, you know, I'm just real thankful to the efforts our staff put in to, to go out and uh, in these challenging times. Right. We, we weren't able to get on the road as much as normal. Some of these young men we haven't even seen in person and they haven't met us in person yet. But with the uh, way we've had to go about recruiting, uh, it's all been virtual, but we did learn some things. You know, there's some things we will carry forward in the recruiting process. Uh, we, we did a lot more Zoom calls, and so we had an opportunity to get in front of families more than we maybe used to do in the past in the old way of recruiting. And, um, you know, I feel that we have a really good class coming in, and we're really excited about getting these guys on campus next fall. And coaches, we kind of fast forward to the spring a little bit. Something different. You're going to play football this spring. That's the plan, at least. Talk a little bit about the upcoming schedule and what you think for the season. Well, right now, they're saying we have a six-game CAA conference schedule opening up March 6th and concluding on April 17th. That would be the spring regular season. Uh, we haven't been able to get any other games. You're allowed to have as many as eight games. Some schools in our conference uh, scheduled one or two non-league games. We haven't been able to find an opponent to add to our six. So as of right now, uh, as I mentioned in the opening segment, we're returning to campus on January 18th. It'll give us a six week return to play protocol, including what would be a different version of what you would call a preseason and uh, hopefully we'll be ready to go March 6th. So there's still so many questions and so many things up in the air, whether that's gonna happen or not. But uh, right now that's the preparation and that's the target that we're aiming for. Coach, we appreciate you and your staff taking the time today to share with us your incoming recruiting class. We wish you best of luck this season in the spring. Oh, Steve, thanks so much. We appreciate it. And like I said, real excited about this class and really thankful that their families and parents and everybody trusted us and our staff to send their most prized possessions to us, their sons. Nova Nation, thank you for joining us for the 2020 Villanova Football Signing Day Show. We appreciate you taking the time to join us today, and as always, go Cats!